Hi all, today we are going to discuss numerical on medium transmission line so that the concept will be clear to you. So let us take a numerical, a three phase 100 kilometer transmission line is delivering 50 megawatt comma 0.8 power factor lag at 132 kV. Each conductor is having a resistance of 0.1 ohms per kilometer and reactance of 0.3 ohms per kilometer and admittance is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 mo per kilometer. If the load is balanced and the leakage is neglected, calculate the sending and voltage, sending and power factor, efficiency and regulation of the line using nominal T method and nominal Pi method. So let us try to note down what is given here. So it is given there that it is a three phase system having a length of 100 kilometers. So I am just noting down whatever is given. So after that the power is given, three phase power is given as 50 megawatt and the power factor at the receiving end is given as 0.8 power factor lagging and it is also given at it is delivering delivering means the receiving and voltage is given as 132 kV remember this this is three phase so you have to divide with root 3 while making the calculations so if you are dividing with root 3 this becomes 76.21 kV so this is the value you get so each conductor is having a resistance of 0.1 ohms per kilometer so resistance is given as 0.1 ohms per kilometer total resistance will be that 0 0.1 multiplied by 100 so 0 0.1 multiplied by 100 this will become 10 and the value of the reactance is given as 0.3 ohms per kilometer this if you multiply it by 100 this becomes 30 ohms and the value of y is also given y is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 mo per kilometer you have to multiply with the number of kilometers so this becomes 300 into 10 to the power of minus 6 mos. This is the value of admittance. So now we have to calculate the value of IR. So IR will be equal to total power P divided by 3 times of VR into cos phi R. This is what we can use. So this power P is equal to 50 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 3 times of VR is 76.21 into 10 to the power of 3 into cos pi is given as 0.8. So if you substitute this, you will get your value as 273.36 amperes. So let us try to solve using different methods. So first one, I am starting with the nominal T method. So in the nominal T method, we have to represent in the form of a T. That means the impedance is divided into two parts. This will become Z by 2, Z by 2 and admittance is kept here. This is my sending and voltage, sending and current. This is my receiving and voltage and this is my receiving and current. Okay. So this voltage I am representing by V dash and let us assume this current capacitor, current that is passing through this is equal to IC. So let us try to calculate this thing. So I can write my value of Vs is equal to A times of Vr plus B times of IR and the value of Is is equal to C times of Vr plus D times of IR. Okay, you agree with me? Now you can calculate the value of A, B, C, D. If you remember them, you can directly substitute. Otherwise, you can solve in your conventional procedure also. So let us solve using A, B, C, D for nominal T method. For nominal pi method, we solve in the conventional manner. So that both things will be clear to you. So A will be equal to 1 plus YZ by 2. So this will be equal to, if you calculate, you will get the answer as 0.9955 plus J 1.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 or this is nothing but 0 0.9955 at an angle of 0 0.086 degrees. So similar way you can calculate B is equal to Z into 1 plus YZ divided by 4. So this if you calculate you will get it as 31.552 at an angle of 71.608. So how to calculate this rectangular to polar form, polar to rectangular form, which one is good in which case? I have discussed in the basic electrical engineering course. You can go to my basic electrical engineering course. There I have discussed application of phasor algebra in solving series and parallel circuits. So you can please check that lecture. So there I have completely explained the phasor algebra how to apply. So you can please check from there. So now calculating the C is equal to Y. So this will become 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 because it is J. So it will be 90 degrees. And we always know that D will be equal to A in transmission lines. So now I can calculate my value of Vs. Vs is equal to A times of Vr plus B times of Ir. So I am just substituting the values 0 0.9955 plus 0 0.9955 plus 0 0.9955 plus 0 0.9955 plus 
एट एन एंगल ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट सिक्स इंटू सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट टू वन प्लस थर्टी वन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव टू एट एन एंगल ऑफ सेवेंटी वन पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो एट दिस आई हेव टू मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू सेवेंटी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स एट एन एंगल ऑफ माइनस थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट सेवन इंटू टेन टू दावर ऑफ माइनस थ्री सो इफ यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस दिस विल कम एज एटी टू पॉइंट नाइन फाइव फोर प्लस जे फाइव पॉइंट जीरो टू नाइन सो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू एटी थ्री पॉइंट वन नाइन एट एन एंगल ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फोर सिक्स नाइन सो दिस विल बी इन के वी पर फेज इफ यू ऑन द लाइन वैल्यू यू हैव टू जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई दिस विथ रूट थ्री ओनली दैट इज अव टू डू सो आई एस आई एस विल बी इक्वल टू सी टाइम्स ऑफ वी आर प्लस डी टाइम्स ऑफ आई आर सो आई एम जस्ट सब्सिट्यूटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ सी डी इज इक्वल टू ए सो दिस विल बिकम थ्री इन टू टेन टू दी पॉवर ऑफ माइनस फोर एट एन एंगल ऑफ नाइनटी डिग्रीज सो दिस इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाई सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट टू वन इन टू टेन टू दी पॉवर ऑफ थ्री प्लस जीरो पॉइंट नाइन नाइन फाइव फाइव एट एन एंगल ऑफ जीरो एट सिक्स दिस विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टू सेवेंटी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स एट एन एंगल ऑफ माइनस थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट सेवन सो दिस वैल्यू विल बी टू सेवनटीन पॉइंट नाइन फाइव माइनस जे वन फोर्टी पॉइंट सिक्स एट सेवन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू टू फिफ्टी नाइन पॉइंट फोर वन एट एन एंगल ऑफ माइनस थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट फोर डिग्रीज दिस वॉट यू ऑप्टेन सो नाउ लेट एस कैलकुलेट द सेंडिंग एंड पावर फैक्टर द सेंडिंग एंड पावर फैक्टर विल बी द एंगल डिफरेंस बिटवीन द वोल्टेज एंड द करेंट सो एंगल ऑफ द वोल्टेज वी गॉट एस थ्री पॉइंट फोर सिक्स नाइन दिस विल बिकम माइनस ऑफ माइनस थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट फोर so this value will be 0.806 this way you have to calculate so now coming to the regulation we know at no load condition we have just derived in the last class the value of vr dash under no load condition will be equal to vs into 1 by y divided by z by 2 plus 1 by y so remember here all are the vectors so we have to divide them or otherwise simply this i can write as vs divided by 1 plus yz by 2 so you have to take the magnitude of this if you want to calculate the magnitude so you this will be equal to 83.11 divided by 1 plus 10 plus j t this will be multiplied by j3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 divided by So this is the value we get. So this will be equal to eighty-three point four nine k. You have to take the magnitude. Remember this. So that's why you are getting this. Now I can calculate the value of the regulation. Regulation will be equal to eighty-three point four nine minus seventy-six point two one divided by seventy-six point two one into hundred. So this value will be nine point five five percentage. Similarly, I can calculate the percentage efficiency. So this percentage efficiency will be. Three phase power divided by three phase power plus the losses. So in the case of nominal T method, the Z is divided into two parts. Here one Z is there, sending and one Z is there. Here the Y is there. So here this is Z by two. Here there is Z by two. So here the current is equal to I R and here the current is equal to I S. That's why the resistances are half of what divided and the currents are different. So this will be equal to three times of R by two into I R square is passing at the receiving end. I I S square is receiving at The sending end. So if you substitute this, this will be equal to 50 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 50 into 10 to the power of 6 plus 3 into 273.36 whole square into 5 plus 3 into 259.14 whole square into 5. So this will be equal to 95.92 percentage. So this is the value you get. So let us try to calculate for the case of nominal pi method. Nominal pi method. So for the nominal pi method, let us try to calculate using the conventional procedure, so that both things will be clear to you. In nominal pi method, the Z will be here. Let us take this current as I dash. So I kept my y by two here. Similarly, I kept my y by two here. So this is my value of V S, and this is my value of V R. This is I R. This is I S, and the current at the capacitor at the receiving end side will be I C R. This will be I C S. So now we are going to calculate the required things. So I am taking my receiving end voltage as 
reference. So I can define my value of IC1 will be equal to that Y by 2 times of VR because across the receiving end side capacitor the voltage that is applied is VR only. So this will be J times of 11.43 amperes. If you just substitute you will get this. Similar way I can calculate my value of I dash. This value of I dash remember here all these are vectors. So I dash is equal to IR plus IC1. So this will be equal to 273.36 into 0.8 plus J 0.6 plus J 11.43. So if you sum them this will become 218.688 plus J 152.0 586. So this value will be equal to 266.65 at an angle of minus 34.9 degrees. So similar way I can calculate my value of Vs. Vs is equal to Vr plus I dash into Z. So this will be equal to 76.21 plus 218.688 minus J 152.586. So this will be multiplied by 10 plus j dot t into 10 to the power of minus 3. So if you substitute this you will get it as 82.97 plus j 5.034 kV. This will be equal to 83.13 at an angle of 3.476. This will be in kV per phase. In this way you have to calculate the sending and voltage. Now similar way I can calculate my value of IC2 that means the sending end capacitor what current is passing because sending and voltage is applied across this and the admittance I am multiplying. So this will be equal to 82.97 plus J 5.034. So this I am multiply with J 1.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4 into 10 to the power of 3 because voltage is in kV. That's where the 10 to the power of 3 I have taken here. So this will become 0 0.755 plus J 12.446 amperes. That kV voltage I have converted to voltage. That is why I have multiplied with 10 to the power of 3. Please don't confuse here. So now sending and current I can calculate. The sending and current will be equal to this value of I dash plus value of IC2. So this will be equal to 218.688 minus J 152.586 plus 0.755 plus J 12.446. So this will come as a 260.37 at an angle of minus 32.56. This is in amperes. So now I want to calculate my power factor, sending and power factor. So sending and power factor will be cos of the angle between voltage and the current. For the voltage, we got the angle as 3.472 minus of minus 32.56. So if we substitute, you will get as 0.809. This is lagging. So this is what we got. So now coming to the regulation. So I have to calculate at no load condition. So we can calculate my receiving end voltage. So receiving end voltage I can calculate my V dash. The magnitude will be equal to. We have seen in the last class this I can write as Vs divided by 1 plus Yz divided by 2. You have to take the magnitude. So just substitute these things. This will become 83.13 divided by 1 plus 10 plus j dot t this i will multiply with j of 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 divided by 2 this i have to take the magnitude so this will become 83.51 kv so this is in receiving and voltage okay fine so now calculating the regulation so regulation will be equal to 82.13 so this is 83.51 right 83. Point so I'm just erasing it. So this value is 83.51 minus 76.21. We have already calculated the receiving end voltage. So divided by 76.21. This I have to multiply with 100. This will become 9.58 percentage. So similar way I can calculate the percentage efficiency will be equal to P divided by P plus three times of because entire impedance is concentrated in center current passing through that is i dash so this will become three times of i dash square into resistance this will become 50 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 50 into 10 to the power of 6 plus 3 into 266.65 square multiplied by 10 so this will be equal to 95.91 percentage 
so let us try to make the summary from this so the second one using nominal pi method we get the value of the regulation is equal to 9.58 percentage and efficiency is equal to 95.91 percentage so now using nominal t method in the nominal t method we have calculated already so there we got the value of the regulation is equal to 9.55 percentage and efficiency we got as 95.92 percentage so you can see here in the nominal t method the regulation is coming less or the efficiency is more than that of the nominal pi method that means we can tell the nominal pi method is the pessimistic method it underestimate the value of the values and in the nominal t method it overestimates the value that means it overestimates that our circuit is better it gives more efficiency than the actual value nominal pi method gives a little bit less than the nominal value so practically it is observed that the value of nominal pi method whatever it gives it will approach very near to the practical value that's why you might have seen practically mostly they use the nominal pi method in practice i hope the medium transmission line and its how to solve the numericals are clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much